If there's a lesson that most parents wish their, their children would learn at a pretty, pretty early stage in life, it's the lesson that it's never too late to do the right thing. Right? Would you agree? It's never too late to do the right thing. But for too many politicians, doing the right thing has come far, far too late in their public life. Too late to avoid the bruising embarrassment of a lost election or the hard consequences that come with breaching the public's temporary and conditional trust. In American history, there, there were political leaders who determined that women should not have the full faith and trust of their government. Politicians withheld the basic right of citizenship, the right to vote. They withheld that right to millions of American women's, women, and many politicians went to their graves without ever correcting that cynical wrong injustice. And then there were politicians who believed that sending thousands, thousands of law-abiding, faithful Japanese Americans into bleak, isolated work camps just less than a century ago, they believed that somehow that would protect our communities from the threat of Imperial Japanese Army. History has declared that those leaders have committed a terrible, terrible wrong. And politicians were late in applying the Bill of Rights to a generation of Asian Americans. And politicians were famously late in scrubbing the indelible stain of our American story. Late to recognize the personhood, the intrinsic worth, the God-given value of Amer African Americans. The civil rights movement came in force and in fury, but only after dogs and fire hoses and the death of innocent children. Only then could their parents finally wake up American leaders to the reality that this one nation under God had two realities existing side by side. Friends, we're here today to alert Republicans and far too many civil rights cheering Democrats to the reality that two public school systems exist in Pennsylvania. It's not too late to do the right thing and to correct this unspeakable wrong. For millions of students this Wednesday morning in the safe, upwardly moving suburban boroughs and townships, the school buses dropped off their students to buildings that were surrounded by well-manicured soccer and lacrosse fields, new football stadiums and amphitheaters that teach the arts, music, and culture. Their world this morning looks like a promise kept, a promise many decades ago by the visionary founders of a free and equal public education system. Their reality provides a safe, secure learning environment, fully equipped with math and science labs, athletic facilities and excellent staffs waiting to train and showcase the next All-American. No, these aren't perfect schools, but their reality is a celebration of hope and promise of public education. But for tens of thousands of children this Wednesday morning, May 9th, 2012, theirs was a cold reality, not like at all the group I just described. The children of Pennsylvania's other public schools live behind an invisible wall, constructed by politicians, defended by multi-million dollar interest groups like teacher unions, and fortified by the belief, by the belief that it's better to protect two parallel, widely different worlds than to try to build one system, one system that works for every parent and every child. But once in a while, the stories get out, right? I mean, don't they? The truth is pretty hard to contain forever. The truth, metal detectors, armed guards, fortress-like classrooms, innocent shattering violence, rapes, personal assaults on students and teachers, even riots. Politicians have sent big checks huge checks, lots of them to, into the tens of billions. But the sad truth persists. Pennsylvania has 80,000 students at risk in just the worst 140 school buildings. This is important. 
Since I came to Harrisburg in 2008, over 10,000 violent acts have occurred in those 140 billion, uh, buildings. That's an act of violence every 17 minutes since I got sworn into the legislature. In these same schools in 2010-2011 school year, nearly one-third, 32% of these students were proficient in reading. 32% of these kids were at grade level. 38% were proficient in math. But statistics don't tell the whole story. They don't tell the story of the moms and dads who took off work and drove to the Capitol today, bringing with them what seems on most days like a fading hope for their child. A dream that politicians in the spring of 2012 will carve out a small but significant passageway for a few thousand of their sons and daughters to slip through that wall to the other reality that I mentioned. They are here with a belief that their story that they bring here today may be a loud enough alarm clock to wake sleeping political consciousness. Men and women in leadership fast asleep, while children in Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania's failing schools wake up every day to that harsh reality that their school doesn't work for them. You today are ringing the bell of truth for your children. We are here today standing with them, armed with the message that it's never too late to do the right thing. So thank you for standing up for your children. Thank you for believing, for hoping, for fighting for change. Don't give up on us, because we won't give up on you. I'm welcomed by some of my colleagues that are standing up to do the right thing. Majority Leader Mike Terzai, Representative Saccone, Harper, Clymer, Quigley Day, Ivankovic, Barrar, and I can continue to go on. There are members in that chamber that want to help. And those are some of the ones that came out today to tell you that they're with you. I want to thank my colleagues, Democrats and Republicans, House and Senate, and Governor Corbett for helping to get this done. We're running out of time. Let's get this done now. God bless you.